My name is Dmitry. I'm a software engineer and a mentor in C++ and Python. Uh, this is the second video in the series that I'm making uh, related to how you can define strict JSON config schemas in Python using Pydatic v2. In this video, we're going to be showing you how you can actually use Pydantic to solve some of the issues that we have highlighted in the first video. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So to remind ourselves where we left off, here on the left, I have a piece of Python code that basically implements a VPN client for a VPN solution that we're developing as a part of our startup that we're making. Um, this application uh, basically accepts a destination server, a destination port from a user in a JSON config that it reads in this function, and it passes it along to our VPN client. And to showcase how that works, let me just run it for you on the config that I've got. So here's the config. It specifies the destination server, bettersoftware.com, and destination port 1234. And we can see that both those values are getting propagated into the VPN client, which is exactly what we want to do. Now, the problem that I have showcased in the previous uh, video what had to do with the fact that since we don't enforce any sort of the structure on that config, uh, we can make a simple typo in the config and make the program misbehave uh, entirely. So let's see how our program does, does um, when we run it with this bad config. So at the first glance, the issue might not be apparent, but destination server is correct. It's fine. Uh, the problem really here is the destination port. Uh, because it defaulted to the default value that we have specified in here because the config that we have passed does not specify the correct spelling of that destination port attribute that we poke that dictionary for. Um, yeah, and this is a problem because our clients will be trying to connect to their servers and won't be able to because they made a, this simple mistake, this simple typo, and that will reflect very badly on our, um, very poorly on our user experience, and they might abandon our app altogether, which is exactly what we not want. Um, so to try to solve this, let's uh, let me sh actually show you another piece of code that I have on my second Tmux window, and in here I use Pydantic to solve that problem. So. Uh, Pydantic is a data validation library in Python. And one of the main concepts that this library has is a Pydantic model. So Pydantic model is something that you define in your, uh, in your uh, Python code. Um, so that's going to be just a class derived from Pydantic.base model. Uh, that class is going to define some number of fields, each of which will have a type specified. And that will actually mean that instances of that class will have all of those fields as well with the types that we have specified. Um, yeah, so that's one thing. And another thing, the, the one, uh, the very nice functionality that Pydantic provides is being able to parse some raw data that we receive from elsewhere according to the uh, Pydantic models that we have defined in our application. So in our case, we're going to apply that functionality to the config that we receive from the user. Um, yeah, so let's let's kind of digest what is happening in that code and walk, walk us ourselves through. Um, so the top function is exactly the same. It just reads a JSON file and returns a dictionary. Now, the, the, the really new thing is the Pydantic model that we define in here. Um, so we inherit it from the base model, just like all Pydantic models have to. And then we define two fields on that model, uh, the server, which is going to be a string, and the destination port, which is going to be an integer. Uh, Pydantic also allows you to attach some annotations to those fields using Pydantic.field. 
um, most of those annotations that you can specify in here are going to affect how Pydantic behaves itself. But in this particular case, the description is there, like it's not going to affect the Pydantic uh, behavior at all. It, it is just there to have a place to actually put that uh, description, like human readable description, near the field. So it is supposed to describe a field uh, so that whoever reads that code will have an understanding of what it does and what this uh, field is trying to refer to. So both of our fields have a description, uh, but the destination port also has a default value. So that default value is gonna come very handy when we actually get to parsing the input from our user, because that will allow Pydantic to set the default value the way we want it. Um, and the next thing we define in that class is model config. So that config is not going to actually be a field on the instance that we receive, like on the instance of that class. Uh, it is there to solely control some of the aspects of Pydantic behavior related to that particular model. So there are two fields, two settings, you might say, that we specify in this config in here. Um, I'll start with the frozen one. So frozen equals true means that uh, once a, an instance of your class is instantiated, it cannot be altered at all. It becomes immutable, uh, which is very nice for if you want to keep track of how a certain entity in your program evolves. If it's frozen, it's very easy to do. You just need to know what it is it has been instantiated with. And then after that, it is it, you know your guarantee that it will never change. And the second thing is uh, extra equals forbid. <clears throat> that actually tells Pydantic that uh, it affects the way Pydantic parses the external information that they provide to it. And uh, uh, it makes the validation part fail if the inputs have any extra information that our model does not expect to have. Um, this is actually going to be a cornerstone in what will help us solve the issue that we have highlighted in the previous video. So now the VPN client class is actually exactly the same as we had it. And the main bit is a bit different. So here we receive the contents of our config file from JSON, just like we did before. But now instead of accessing them directly, we first pass them along to Pydantic in the form of invoking this uh, method of the class of so VPN client config method uh, called model validate that will actually compare the CFG underscore content, uh, the dictionary that we provided here against the definition that we gave here in the class itself. So it's going to look for destination server key, destination port key, um, Going a bit further, it's going to, if it doesn't see the destination port key, that's fine because we have specified a default value for that uh, key. So it will just use the default value to populate the field on the resulting model. And the result of validation, so there are two outcomes that can happen. The first one, the, the positive one, if the validation is successful, we'll just receive an instance of that model and we can use it uh, further along our program. Um, and the second option is if the validation fails, then the Pydantic is going to raise an exception. Here, we don't catch that exception in any way. So if an exception is to occur, then it's going to fail our program entirely. And this is kind of what we want here. So this is the intended behavior. So we receive that CFG object, and we can now use it to instantiate our VPN client. So there's a couple of nice things about the CFG object that we've got here. So first of all, the destination server and port, we know that they are present uh, in, the, in the CFG object because this is what the model says. Moreover, we actually know what their type is. So for the sake of experiment, let's try to pretend we made a mistake when writing this code. And we will replace the destination server here with destination port. Let's see what happens. So here I'm trying to specify the destination port and pass it along as the destination server for my VPN client. And as you can already see in here, 
my type checker complains that the VPN client actually expects us to have a string uh, passed in here, but we're trying to pass along an integer. So that's incorrect, uh, which is very nice because previously when we just uh, pulled those, val those values from the dictionary, we actually didn't have an idea and uh, Python didn't have an idea of what the type was gonna be. And then here we, we are guaranteed to have that exact type. So that's very nice. Now let's see how that program would behave on the same config that we have used uh, previously. So if we take the correct config, right, and try to run our pydantic config.py on that config, then we'll actually see that the fields are passed along as we wanted them to. So the, the values are exactly what we expected them to be. Um, yeah, and this just functions correctly. Nice. But now let's see if we have actually solved the problem that we initially set out to solve. So for that, we'll take a look at the bad config that still has this little typo that prevented us from, uh, well, behaving properly uh, the last time. And let's see how pedantic config uh, behaves on that config. So we run it and it fails. So if we look at the return code, it's one, it failed. And you can see why. So it says here in clear terms that our, we've got one validation error for the VPN client config. And it actually even says what the field uh, is or like what the problem is. So it says that we've received something called destination port, which is not something that we expect. And the model definition actually prohibits it from having those extra fields. It says type equals extra forbidden. Um, yeah, so basically that's exactly what we would want in this case from our program, because uh, if the config is invalid or incorrect in any way, we would like to know as quickly as possible and fail as early as possible so that our users can actually change that config and fix it and, uh, well, fix it so that they can actually use the program in the way they want to. Um, that actually concludes how we can uh, solve that issue. So it solves that solves it entirely. Problem is just gone. But actually, Pydantic has lo has loads of other stuff to provide for us. So this is going to be something that we'll discover and something that we'll cover in the next video. Stay tuned.